Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for another day that he's given yes. us. Amen. And we welcome those by Facebook. Sincere milk of the word. Lord's House of Prayer, Sunday morning service. Amen. Welcome on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And we just give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor because he's worthy. Amen. And as the song says, he is not through blessing us yet. Amen. And so we just give him the praise and the glory. Amen. And we're going to prepare our hearts to enter into the word on today. Amen. And as we were dealing last Sunday with keeping hope alive or keep hope alive. Amen. And we're going to have a part two today because the Lord really dealt with me after Sunday. Amen. And so I just want to share a few more things. Amen. Because as I always say, understanding is half the battle. Amen. Because even once you get an understanding of what you're dealing with, you still got to fight. Amen. But it makes the battle uh, winnable when you understand. The Bible even talks about us not being ignorant of the devil's devices. Amen. Because even when you know what he does, if you're not careful, he can still do it to you. <laughs> he can still, because he's that deceptive. He's that, and he has, as I always taught, and I can't really say enough about it, he has a, an insider, our own flesh, amen, that works with the devil against your spirit. When you really get that revelation, it's going to really help you. Because you, you really have to understand that your flesh really is against you. Its appetites, its desires really are against you. It's really trying to destroy you. Amen. 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 That's what the Bible tells us. Your flesh thus against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. They're what? Contrary yeah. one to another. Yeah. So you can't do the things that you would. But... If you be led of the Spirit, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Following the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Because you're going to always like that, you know, those old memes they have where you got the uh, the angel on this <laughs> soft shoulder and the little red on that shoulder. <laughs> and how many know that's true? The devil speaks in your ear and the Holy Ghost speaks in your ear. Amen. Amen. And you have to understand that and be discerning who's speaking. Yeah. Right. Amen. Because sometimes we end up cooperating with the enemy mm -hmm. because we don't discern that yeah. it's his voice and not the Lord's voice. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I, I'm, I'm getting better at it because oh. I don't want the devil to have any place in my life. Mm -hmm. No place. Because he don't have nothing good to bring into your life. Amen. The only thing he comes to do is steal, kill, and destroy. And he's been doing it for a long time. Amen. But I thank God that Jesus came that we might have life. And that we might have it more abundantly. Amen. And so we thank God for the life that Jesus Christ gives us. We thank God for his mercy. Yeah. Amen. So go ahead. Praise God. Praise God. Do you see what's wrong with me? No, use the slide. This is good. Okay. Okay, hopefully that's better. Amen. Amen. Well, we praise God for his goodness. So we're going to, again, deal with uh, this subject, keep hope alive, amen, because that's what we need to do. 
in this time that we're living in. Amen. And we know that our hope is in who? Jesus. And who is Jesus? He is the Word of God. And I, the reason why I stress that is because sometimes we, we talk about Jesus, but we don't really talk about him as the Word. So we don't really value this, what we have right here. Amen. But this right here, every time you open this up, this is God speaking to you, leading you and guiding you. Amen. And if we want to be successful, and success is a relative word, because success has to do with your goal or with your purpose. Amen. You can accomplish a lot and still not be successful. That's right. Because okay. you're not fulfilling your purpose or the goal that you set. That's Amen. Right. A person that says how to be a doctor and becomes a lawyer, was they really successful? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Not if their goal was to be a doctor. That's right. Amen. And so we have to understand what is God's purpose? What is God plan for us? Because a lot of people are being deceived, and I'm talking about in the church, because we as pastors are not preaching what we ought to be preaching. We are not telling the people, your, your, your purpose is to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That's your purpose. That's the goal that God has set for you. So I don't care how big a church building I might get, how large a membership I get, if I don't allow the word of God to transform me into his image, I fail. And if I don't preach a word that transforms you, I fail. Amen. Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we make it through them pearly gates. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we praise God. Now, um, let me check. Is, did he say, is this better? He said it's good. Okay. All right. We, they were saying the mic was a little loud. So we are get it fixed. So that's why I want to keep us focused on the word. Because the times that we are living in, if you start focusing on what's happening around you, I promise you, you're going to become discouraged. Because things are changing and they're changing quickly. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we don't know. We thought 2020 was bad, but we don't know what 2021 holds. We just getting started. Amen. Amen. And one of the things that I was saying the other night that they're talking about is um, fixing it so that you have to have a, a, what they call a COVID passport. Mm -hmm. So you've got to take the vaccine if you want to travel, if you want to do it. That's what they're talking about. That right there lets me know it's something in that vaccine they're trying to get in you. Amen. Because like, like it keep being said, well, folk that are telling the truth, the COVID um, actually only has a 99 point, has a 99.9, .9, something like that, recovery rate. So it's not as deadly as now. If you get it, 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 it's bad. And nobody wants to get it. But for them to be mandatory, a vaccine, with something that has that recovery rate, mm -hmm. it's something more to it. And so what God is trying to get us to do is really pay attention to what's going on around us. See, some people don't like the way I preach because I deal with with what's happening today. And, and we don't want to, a lot of people don't even want to know because they're too scared. <laughs> Amen. But I'd rather know so I can prepare myself Amen. than not know and be surprised. Yeah. Amen. Because what the Bible said is going to happen, it's going to happen. And we're living in some really um, Horrendous times, but as we were talking about in Matthew 24, all these things must come to pass before the end comes to pass. Amen. But as the song we used to sing, we live in the live again. Amen. We're just passing through this life. Amen. We're strangers and we're pilgrims, but we're looking for a better life. Amen. We are, we are not um, physically we might be citizens. But spiritually, we're citizens of heaven. Oh, yeah. Amen. And we cannot lose that focus. We can't lose that hope. Amen. But that's what the enemy is trying to do in this time that we're living in. 
Amen. So what I want to do today is I want to go back to uh, Lamentations, the third chapter. After I finished preaching this word, it was like God just began to illuminate something in my mind, and I want I want to deal with that today. Let me, let's go back to Lamentation chapter three. Lamentation chapter three, and let's start at. I believe we're going to start at uh, verse 18. Amen. And we talked about what was going on at that time. Amen. That um, how Israel was had sent its way into captivity and all the things that was happening because of their disobedience um, to God. And, and, and there's some things we're going to really deal with to bring it down to today when we get into Revelation. Because we have to understand, as I always say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And we are them. And when, when you understand that a lot of stuff happened to them, we're going to go through it too. Remember and when they were in Babylon, they made that idol and everybody had to bow down to the idol? Remember what it's saying in Revelation? They're going to make an image to the beast. And you're going to have to bow down to that image or you won't be able to buy or sell. Mm -hmm. So we're headed for that type of situation again. But God, I want you to hear me, God has given us a chance to prepare for it. Because the reason why Daniel and the three Hebrew boys was able to go through without bowing was because they was prepared. They were full of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. They had courage. Yes. Amen. They knew their God. Amen. And they knew that he was able to deliver. That's why the Hebrew boys told King Nebuchadnezzar, because King Nebuchadnezzar, he kind of liked them boys. Mm -hmm. But they were smart. Mm -hmm. He kind of liked them. They had the favor of God on them. So mm -hmm. he said, okay, um, I hear y'all not bowing to my idol. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm using my spiritual imagination. I'm, I'm, I guess he kind of said, well, I kind of like y'all, so I'm going to give y'all another chance. That the time you hear the music, y'all buy. But you know what they say? Oh, King, live forever. He said, we don't even need time to think about it. See? Because their mind was already made. Up. Their heart was already fixed. Is your heart fixed? Is your mind made up that no matter what comes or goes, you ain't going to buy? Amen. If it's not, it's time to get it fixed. Because Jesus is coming. The signs are all there. He's coming. And we need to be ready. But as I always say, before he comes, Antichrist is going to come. Don't, don't be deceived by this pre-tribulational stuff. Before he comes, the Bible said that day cannot come except they come first a falling away, which we are seeing. So, so many are falling uh, away from the faith. Yeah. And you, we used to sing the song, so many falling by the wayside. Lord, help me to stand. So we're in the midst of a great falling away. Okay? And the Bible said there will come a falling away first, not from the church necessarily, but from the faith. People don't believe the Bible like we used to believe. Right. So there's a falling away, a great falling away from the faith. Yeah. So he said that's the first thing. There comes a falling away first. Then the second thing is the man of sin has to be revealed. That's the Antichrist. He has to be revealed before Christ comes. So the Bible makes that clear. Amen. And so we need to be preparing ourselves to stand, get ready. Because as I always said, we don't know. Um, in, in Germany, they went to, to bed free. That by that next morning, they were in, in a dictatorship. They were in a dictatorship. 
And so we have to think about these things. Amen. And that's why um, I, I teach the way I do because I want us to be aware of what's really going on. So let's look at, we're going to start at um, verse 18. we in Lamentations 3 and 18. Now this I want I want us to, to get this today as the Lord really dealt with me about this. Amen. And it was a blessing to me, so hopefully it will be a blessing to you. Look what he says. And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Because of all the Jeremiah went through, because they disobeyed God, the whole nation had to go through. Even those who were living right. They still had to go through because of what the others had done. Get that revelation. We get verse 19. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood or the bitterness and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. And remember what we said. That's why God did what he did to Israel was to bring them back to what? A humble place, a broken place, a place where they would look, begin to look to the Lord once again. Because Israel had a bad habit of backsliding. And I know some folks say we can't backslide today, but I beg the difficult. The church has a bad habit of backsliding now. That's why we have to every now and then have a revival, a true revival that brings us back in line with the word of God. And we are right now in desperate need of one of those times. That's why we are praying for this. We need a true revival, not a meeting. Where somebody comes and preaches for a week and by the time the week is over, the trail is cold. We need a time where, where the Bible calls a time of refreshing, where God pours out his spirit like he did in times of old. They said in, 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 in um, the one revival, it might have been the Welsh revival, forget which one, there was such a move of the spirit of God that they, it was a coal miner town, and um, they had to shut down the coal mines because all the coal miners started getting saved. And when they got saved, their language started to change. They were swearing and cussing and doing all this. And so the mules, they understood that language. Yeah, see, they understood when they cursed them out. And some people do this and curse them. They understood that. But when they got saved, yeah. see, that's how I know. When you really get saved, some stuff you're going to stop doing. Yeah. You ain't going to keep cursing. Yeah. You get saved. Yeah. You might, but you're going to be convicted. You can't do stuff like you used to. I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. I'm not saved. And I can't yeah. do everything I used to do. Not comfortably. Right. But they said they stopped cussing. So what ended up happening, they had to retrain the mules. That's the kind of revival that I'm seeking for. That's what we need. Not just for somebody to come and preach a little nice message and get us all excited. But then when we leave, we go right back to doing what we were doing before we came. I ain't talking about that kind. I'm talking about the kind where our hearts a change. Yeah. We get a new home, a new thirst for righteousness yeah. that causes us, even when we leave, yeah. we're still in a place of seeking the face of that's God. Right. That's what we Amen. need. That kind. See, that's what we need. And that's why God is going to allow the church to go through something. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through something. Oh, this yeah. church in America. Amen. And we God see it being so. set up right now. Amen. Amen. But what we go through is going to bring us to a place of humility. Mm -hmm. and bring us back to that place where we are crying out to God, to where we are seeking God with our whole heart, where we put away all this pride this, that, that done crept up in the church. Amen. We're going to put all that aside. We're going to say, ain't nobody going to be worried about what denomination. The only thing they're going to be worried about, do you know Jesus? Yes. All right. That's what's That's going to happen. Amen. Ain't nobody yeah. gonna be worried about. Well, I'm apostle, so, yeah. so, <laughs> so, right, so right. I'm bishop, so 
evangelist, so and so. They just gonna be worried about I'm a saint of the most high God. I am a servant. That's what's that's the kind of revival God God's gonna have to bring, and it's gonna come as we go through something. Amen. And I don't like to suffer no more than anybody. Mm -hmm. But when sometimes we need to go through something, we do. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't got too comfortable. Amen. The Bible said, warn to them that are at ease mm -hmm. in Zion. Yes. And that's where we are. We're at ease. But God finna stir some stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's already stirring in 2020. We're stirring some stuff. Mm -hmm. See? Amen. But but it looks like we're going back to sleep. <laughs> so God don't have to keep wake us up. Huh? <laughs> so understand what he's saying here. He said, I remember the affliction. The things that I went through, they're still in my memory. Yeah. And my heart is what? Humble. Um, yeah. But then look what he says. I love this. This is my favorite part of this whole passage. Verse 21. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. You remember what we talked about keeping hope alive? Mm -hmm. Okay. This I recall to mind, therefore I have I hope. Look at verse 22. This is where God began to really deal with me. Mm -hmm. It is of the Lord's mercy. Yeah, his mercy. That we are not consoled. Mm -hmm. Not our goodness. Mm -hmm. Amen. His Mercy. You remember what he told Israel? He said, I'm not going to make a full end of you, but I'm going to judge you in, 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 a, um, measure, in a measure. He said, but I'm not going to do it for your goodness. I'm not doing it because of you because he said, y'all stiff-necked and hard heart. This is what God called. Yes, he did. But he said, I'm going to do it for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. See, what God's going to do is going to be for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because when the people of God act the fool, it brings reproach mm -hmm. on God. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Amen. You know what Moses' argument to God was when God told Moses because he was tired of Israel? Mm -hmm. He was tired of Israel because he was going through the wilderness. He kept showing his signs and his wonders, how he delivered them out of Egypt. But every time they went through a little something, something, their hearts and their minds went away. Back to Egypt. Back to Egypt. After all he had shown, they kept in their heart turning back to Egypt. So God came to the point. See, that's why I know we don't know the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible get tired of us. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. Y'all read the Bible. He was so yes. tired of Israel, he told Moses, he said, leave me alone. <laughs> Moses was the intercessor. Yes. Mm -hmm. You never want to get to the point where God tells the intercessor, stop praying for you. Oh, oh. You never want to get to that oh, oh. That's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. But he told Samuel, he said, don't pray for Saul. I reject it. Mm -hmm. So you yes. can stop all that. Mm -hmm. All that snapping and stuff for him, stop it. <laughs> we got to get back to preaching what the Bible says yeah. because everybody ain't going to be saved by love. So the Bible says some you save with compassion, but That's some you won't say with yeah. fear. That's right. See, yeah. some of us going to have to. Can we say it like this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's just the truth. It is. We it full is. of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just talking about the love of God ain't working. Right. <laughs> All right. We got to understand that God is a God of love, yeah. but He's also a God of justice. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. So we got to get that revelation. Mm -hmm. So He told Moses, "Stop praying for Him." Mm -hmm. He said, "Leave me alone." Y'all go back and read it. I ain't telling y'all nothing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Say, leave me alone mm -hmm. and let me wipe them out. Mm -hmm. He's gonna wipe out the whole of Israel because he's tired of it. Mm -hmm. I don't want God to get tired of me. Amen. 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 But, but Moses was a good ancestor. 
And Whoa. some of y'all, I'm just going to tell you the truth, and I'm speaking by the Holy Ghost. Y'all just don't know how, how many times God done got tired of some of us. Oh. We don't know how close we've been right. to being right. cut off. Okay. If it wasn't for the mercies of God. Right. If it wasn't for the intercession right. of Jesus Christ. You have to get the revelation. Because Moses said, not so, Lord. He interceded. Uh -huh. See, that's why God had Moses intercede, because he was the meekest man. And Moses wasn't, because God told him, he said, let me destroy them, and I'll make a greater nation of you. And some of us would have been like, oh, it is. Since you said that, go ahead. <laughs> All right. But not Moses. Yeah. Not Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses, he interceded and he said, not yeah. so, Lord. Why? Yeah. He said, your, your name is at stake. Yeah. Yeah. He said, if you do that, then your enemies are going to say, it's because you didn't have power to win. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. huh. <laughs> when he started interceding yes. like that. Yes. See, the point I'm making, God ain't going to do what he's about to do. Not for us. That's but his right. Name. His name is right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So in his name. See, because when we live right, that brings a good light on his name. Amen. 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 You, you know what they say Gandhi said? Gandhi, he was Hindu, right? He said, I don't have a problem. If I'm not mistaken, it was him. I don't have a problem with y'all Jesus. It's his followers. That's that that that's bad. Yeah. That is. Yeah. And you know a lot of people are saying that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got to get the understanding so that we can what? We can come up to the to God has empowered us to be able to live the life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That will bring glory to his yeah. name. Yeah. That will yeah. cause his name to be exalted. Yeah. And he's going to bring us up to that place. Mm -hmm. Those that it belong to him. That's right. Okay, let me get back to this. What he said, verse 21. This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy mm -hmm. that we are not consumed. Because his compassion fail not. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy mercy. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When the Lord really, you know how the light bulb goes on? See, that's where our hope lies. In his mercy. Yes. How many glad for his mercy? Oh, yeah. That's where the hope now. Yeah. And what the Lord told me, that's why you can't stop crying out. I don't care where you are in your walk with God, how messed up you are. Remember, it's of the Lord's mercy yeah. that you are not consumed. Yeah. And that's why you can't stop crying out. Yeah. I don't care if you mess up. You got to keep crying out to God. Yeah. Because when mercy keeps in, it's a deliverance that's going to come into your life. And it's going to move you to another place. Because he ain't doing it for your sake. He's yeah, doing it for right. his name. And because he made a covenant with our father. We're going to get to this. Because when he started unfolding this thing to me, I was like, Lord, I thank you for your mercy. Yeah. I thank you. Because mercy is what necessitates grace. If it wasn't for his mercy, we would be saved by grace. We're going to deal with those two terms. Then I used to think they were the same, but then I began to understand they are two different aspects of God's, uh, the manifestation, manifestation of God's goodness. So let me read that one more time. Verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. In other words, the Lord's mercy that keeps the hand of the enemy from just destroying us. Amen. I like the scripture where it says, um, by this I know that the Lord favors me 
because my enemies have not triumphed over me. Mm -hmm. Amen. And like I say sometimes, I've been thrown under the bus, hmm. ran over, hmm. ran back over, <laughs> ran over again, <laughs> thrown in the ditch, <laughs> had dirt thrown on me, and the third day I still got it. Amen. 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 Why? Because of the favor. Do I have anybody know? Oh, I'm talking about oh, you yeah. are supposed to be here because yeah. of your enemy was right. trying to do away with you. Yeah. But his mercy, yeah. his yeah. grace, his favor on your life is why you still here. Amen. See, and this is what Paul was saying. He said, um, therefore, uh, in, 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 in Romans, where it says uh, about the the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, present your body. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice because of his mercy, because of what he's done. We be celebrating resurrection today because of what he's done in Christ. Mm -hmm. We can present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is just what we're supposed to do. Amen. It's just our reasonable, yeah. reasonable That's right. service right. because of what he's done. Amen. Amen. But it's of his mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Yes. Therefore, we don't have to depend on yesterday's mercies. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's new mercy for you today. If you did fail yesterday, there's some new mercy for you today. Yeah. There's some more compassion for you. Because like I said, I heard this brother and I never forgot when he said it because it made too much sense. He said, I thank God for uh, another chance because I done used up my second chance. <laughs> I mean, some, of, some of us are used to first, second, third, fourth, fifth. What chance are you on? Oh, yeah. You can yeah. ask for another yeah. one. You can ask for new mercy. Yeah. You can ask for new mercy. Every morning, yeah. you just got That's to right. get up and get it. That's yeah. right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> get it. Get that mercy. Get that grace. Amen. That he has for us. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that we can live a life that is acceptable. Yeah. Because I don't teach it won't run out. I don't teach that. Mm -hmm. It can run out. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. But you know he's full of mercy. Mm -hmm. And I thank him. Amen. Because he is long oh, suffering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. But I always remind us, don't 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 play like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. people are playing with God because mm -hmm. he is long suffering. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then you hear his voice. What did he say? Heart, 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 heart. That's right. As in the provocation, because his mercy did run out mm -hmm. on some folk. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be in that in that situation. Because I'm not teaching us to play. I'm just helping us to understand. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I and, and I understand some of us are really wanting to be saved and we are really striving as much as we can and we still make mistakes and we still fail. And the reason I'm talking to you today is his mercy. His mercy. I don't want you to give up. See, that's what we're talking about. Um, uh, patience of hope. Because you have to learn how to wait on God. Even if he don't do it today, there's some things, and, 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 and as, as, as I said before, the reason why I'm even here where I am and not further along in my walk is because I made some mistakes. But because he loved me. I mean, he didn't deal with me with kid gloves, no? <laughs> you let me know you better straighten up. Don't, don't keep, don't, don't. He let me know, don't play with me. And he put the fear in me. See, that's why, that's why I ain't trying to mess up. But I know sometimes in your trying not to mess up, you still mess up. And God wants you to know that it's because of his mercy. That you are not consumed. Oh. 
His compassion is coming out. They're new every morning. So even when you mess up, he said, you get back up and you ask God to forgive you and to strengthen you because that's what he wants to do. He wants to see you make it. Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. Okay, verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope and in will I hope in him. Will I hope in his what? Mercy. Mercy. See, that's where our hope is. I want us to get this. Okay, verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that what? Wait, Wait. Wait for him. him. To the soul that what? Seeketh Seek him. So that waits for him. The soul that doesn't get tired of seeking him and just throw up their hands. The Bible said it's time to seek the Lord until he comes, not until we get tired of seeking him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we got to seek him until he comes. I done made in my mind because I believe that God is about to do something. I don't know when, but it's my hope that keeps me praying. It's my hope that causes me to wait Patient. Yeah. You know, because you can be waiting and not waiting. Patient. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You been we've all been in the line yeah. with the in person, in, impatient person. And sometimes we've been that impatient. Amen. You can tell when folks who's patient. Oh, yeah. They start oh, yeah. puffing. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, that's on the first side. <laughs> when the sisters put the hand on me, <laughs> then we got out of patience now. Huh? Amen. And then we start what? Complaining. Uh -huh. We start murmuring. Uh -huh. And it's not good enough for us to be doing it. We try to get everybody in the house involved. But we get what? Yeah. Yeah. When we lose yeah. patience. Yeah. Don't we do that even with God? Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. But I want you to see what the book says. Because mm -hmm. it says, verse 25 again, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Mm -hmm. It is good that a man should both what? Oh. Oh. And what? Quietly. Yes. <laughs> Quietly <laughs> or patiently. Yeah. Yeah. You see them folk that's in line and they just wait patiently. Yeah. I Not see Because they got hope that sooner or later they're going to get to the yeah. Amen. And they do what they want. That's right. Amen. Huh? Yeah. And those people normally they learn that. Mm -hmm. They learn that. Impatience don't get you to the front of the line no quicker. No. It might get you thrown out of the line, <laughs> or it might get you to leave the line before Amen. you get what you can. Amen. Right. That's right. That's why we have to learn how to wait on God. How yeah. patiently, and we got to have a hope in His mercy mm -hmm. that won't let us give up. Mm -hmm. That keeps us coming, but keeps me on my knees is I got some needs for God's mercy. Mm -hmm. I got some needs for his grace. Mm -hmm. And I just believe the word that if I seek him with my whole heart, mm -hmm. see, this is what keeps me telling him, Lord, purge everything out of me that's not like you. Because I still have some things in me that will sometime when I should be seeking God, it draws me in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And it might not be anything most people say, well, What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. You know. But some things, you know, we think ain't no harm to. If it's keeping you out of God's face, mm -hmm. the devil is trying to draw you away. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, that's why a lot of people don't like it because I keep talking about television and all this. I'm going to keep talking about it too. <laughs> because it's one of the biggest issues. And God verified this when he told me it one of the biggest issues. Everybody don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Some other that some other problem. But one of the biggest issues in the church is our, our inability to stay focused. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife, we were just looking at the day we were driving yesterday. Do you watch, watch what I'm saying? I don't care where you go, 
Mm. What does everybody got in their hand? A phone. Mm -hmm. Or a device. Little child in the stroller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's for shame. Uh -huh. They're being trained at that age. Uh -huh. I believe a lot of this, what do you call it? EDD? ADD. Uh, ADD. Uh -huh. <laughs> it comes from attention deficit. It comes from us always sticking stuff in these children's face to keep them. I mean, stuff that ain't that is not that they're not learning from. Right. I'm exactly. talking about just being entertained mm -hmm. because we don't understand what we call entertainment. God calls indoctrination. Mm -hmm. and the devil calls it indoctrination. Mm -hmm. We're being indoctrinated to think certain way. Mm -hmm. God's trying to break some habits. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I know myself. Oh, right. If I walk out that house without that phone, I feel like I've left a part of me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we'll go back and get it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say, what did we do before that? But the point that I'm trying to help us to understand okay. is, yeah. is <laughs> that these things are to distract us. That's right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you could be meditating in the word of God, mm. you're trying to find something else. <laughs> <laughs> You know, anybody ever had this experience? The Holy Ghost is telling you, you know, getting the word. He's bringing it to you, uh -huh. getting the word. But you're busy looking for, you just looking for something on your phone, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go from one hour to another. You can't really find them. You just looking. Yeah. Scrolling. <laughs> ain't found nothing. Never thinking I could be doing this. That's right. Amen. And growing in grace and in knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Getting some words so I can fight the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you play right into his hand. Yeah. Amen. That's why I'm teaching what I'm teaching because God is seeking to get a people ready that's going to love coming. with all his power. So that we'll be in a position to really be used by God. Mm -hmm. Because we are focused. Mm -hmm. We are kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm not saying that the technology is necessarily bad, but our addiction to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. When it's coming between you and God, when you spend it, you know, my my, 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 my pastor tell me at the end of the week how much time that I spend <laughs> on this, how much screen time I have. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they say your screen time this week was up by such and such percent. Mm -hmm. I'm always glad when they said it was down by such and such percent. Mm -hmm. Because I'm doing a little better. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And so, the devil don't want you waiting on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Waiting on the Lord does not just mean you sit around doing nothing, but it means you are actively seeking Him. Mm -hmm. Searching for Him. Mm -hmm. Getting in His Word. Getting in prayer. Mm -hmm. When you're not physically in the Word, you're meditating on the Word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, or, and, and that's true. Or, or minister, whatever he needs you to do, because sometimes he, he would have you to do something or to be somewhere, but because you're not mm -hmm. in tune, uh -huh. you miss it. I remember when I first got saved, I was so into the word, and I'm seeking to get back to that place, because God, when you're in that place, you can be minding your own business, and God will mind the business that pays you that God has given you to do, and God will <laughs> speak something in your spirit. I'll never forget. I was <laughs> In, in the military, I was in my barracks, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God, he just, I just got hungry, two, two instances. One, I got hungry, all of a sudden I got hungry. And I ran down to the PX, and then I was going there because I was just hungry. And I got my little hamburger gun in line. I still ain't eat that hamburger. Because when I got in line, I understood I wasn't there for that hamburger. All right. I was there for this soul that was in front of me. Mm -hmm. And God put a word in me 
Then I started a conversation with him before it was done. I forgot all about that hamburger. All right. We were in the chapel and he was giving his life to the Lord. So right. You have to understand that we are not the harvest. But yeah. you have to be able to be like Jesus. Yeah. Remember what he said? He needed to go through Samaria. Uh -huh. If he would have been in tune with the, with the Lord, because the Jews didn't fool with Samaria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God wants to send you into some places that you normally wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. For what? For soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. See? And that's why you have to be in the place where you can hear the voice of the Lord leading yes. you and guiding you at all times. Yes. Doing his word. Doing his will. Yes. Amen. And so, the devil don't want you quietly waiting on God. Why? Right? Because as you quietly wait on God, <coughs> you become more and more in tune to his voice. <coughs> Amen. To what he has to say. And to how he's leading you and guiding you. So, he says, hope and patiently or quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Verse 26. Now, look at verse 27. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He said it alone and keep it silent because he had borne it upon him. The yoke of his, really, uh, the sin. See, the Bible says satisfy us early. Because a lot of, the longer you out there in sin, the more you get into. I many wish you would have got to say early. Because you wouldn't have got so much that you got to work through now. <laughs> Amen. All right. That's why I pray. Whenever I pray for our youth, I say, Lord, satisfy them early with yes. your salvation. Yes. So that they don't have to go through a whole lot of yes. stuff Amen. that later they got to work through. That's right. So hmm. hard to give up. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he said it's good that he should bear it in his youth. He said it alone and keep it silent because he had borne it upon him. Amen. Okay, I want I want to stop there because the main things I want us to get out of here it is of the Lord's what mercies mm -hmm. that we are not consumed, and that is it's important for us to wait out quietly on the salvation of God. Yeah. Amen. Wait on Him. Amen. Like I said last week, if He don't come today, well maybe this is the prayer. Maybe this, but just keep seeking. Mm -hmm. That's where I am. And I believe God spoke something to me this morning and got me excited. We was having, we was having a time in here this morning. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 Okay, let, 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 let me move on a little bit. I want, I want to show us a few things, and I'm not going to be before the Lord today. I'm almost done because of my, I said the time that I'm going to be out today. Amen. Uh, now, these are just some things that, that God put in my spirit. Faith is the guarantee of hope. I saw that on some. It is guarantee. That's why you have to get in the word of God because this, again, is the source of your what? Faith. Right. Mm -hmm. The reason why I do the things that I do is because the Bible says if I do. The Bible talks about exceeding great and precious promises. He promised that if I would do this, he would do that. Mm -hmm. And because he made that promise, that's what keeps me doing this. Amen. That's what keeps me crying out to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what keeps me seeking him. Mm -hmm. That's what helps me when I fall, yeah. not to stay down, but yeah. to get back yeah. up. Because when I read the Bible, the Bible says the righteous fall seven times. Mm -hmm. But he get back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand this because the enemy, he always trying to get you what? Discouraged. God ain't even hearing you. You know you right. a mess. God yeah. ain't listening to you. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but it's of the Lord's what? Mercy. <laughs> that we are not concerned. I know he listens to me because he delivers me. Amen. That's how you know he listens. Because he delivered you. Amen. He might not deliver you. I told y'all I had to go up to Reno and the South Lake Tahoe for years. But I'm free now. Mm. That's the only thing I have to do is stay free. Because I don't care if you get free. Don't think, don't think 
Pharaoh ain't coming after you. Amen. Because That's you right. left Egypt. <laughs> he coming with all his army. That's right. That's right. But there's still a Red Sea. Oh, mm. yeah. yes, Thank Lord. God. You just stay with God. He'll let you go through it. And then when your enemy try to follow you. Anybody ever been delivered from somebody that was just, just going to mess with you anyhow? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need to start feeling sorry for them. <laughs> if you stay with God, yeah. okay. it's going to come up. Oh, yeah. Well, the enemy you see no. today, you mm. will see no more forever. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But you got to hope and quietly wait. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Israel had to wait 400 years. Hmm. But because God had made a covenant, mm -hmm. that's that's the key. I, okay, let, let, let me let me read what mercy means right quick. And as I said before, God's mercy is the source of our hope. Look at what mercy means. He says compassion. Mm -hmm. Remember what he said? Mm -hmm. His compassion fell out. That's mercy. Mm -hmm. Human or divine, especially active, tender mercy. Now, this is the um, definition I wanted to um, lift out. It says mercy, it says kindness or goodwill towards the miserable and the afflicted. Miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody ever been miserable <laughs> and afflicted? Been sick of myself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. Some of us are miserable because of us. Amen. 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 But his mercy. Yes. Yeah. Is, is his kindness and goodwill towards the miserable yeah. and the afflicted. And the afflicted. Watch this. Pay attention to this now. Joined with a desire to help them. Oh. Mm. Praise mm. God. It's not just that he has mm -hmm. kindness and goodwill towards right. you mm -hmm. in your miserable and afflicted condition, <laughs> but he has a desire yeah. to help. Yeah. Amen. He wants to help. Yes, Amen. Yes, he yes, he yes, he That's right. But you got to keep hope alive. Yeah. You got to know he wants to help you. Yeah. If you ain't delivered yet, keep seeking. Yeah, keep seeking. Don't give yeah. up. Because when you give up, you lose by default. Mm -hmm. I was watching this um, boxing match once. Um, the Tyson was fighting this guy. The guy was bigger than Tyson and everything. But Tyson was whooping him. And he hit him, knocked him down. He hit him hard. Do you know that? This was in maybe the first round. Do you know that fella went back to his round and told his corner he wanted to quit? <laughs> he told his corner to call the fight. Yeah. I'm had enough. <laughs> and, and, uh, his corner said, no, we're not. <clears throat> they patched him up and sent him back out. <laughs> he went out there and took a little more beat. <laughs> went back to the corner. He said, I'm done. <laughs> I'm going back out to him. Uh -huh. He walked out. Mm -hmm. He didn't care what they said. That's right. That fight was over. Because uh -huh. <laughs> he quit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Your <laughs> he may come to beat him if he would have went to this. Yeah. You got to understand. <laughs> That's it. Because when he went in there, he had hope that he could win. <laughs> Joined with a desire. 
desire. Yes. And that's right. The desire. You can tell when somebody's really merciful. Mm -hmm. They don't just go back, oh, I feel so sorry for you, and keep going. Mm -hmm. No, I feel sorry for you, but it's joined with a desire. I want to be happy. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Yeah.
he, he stopping me from talking about he, he stopping me from talking about the young men walking around with their pants uh, to the knees and, and all of this because what they need is not me mocking them they need me praying for them mm. that God in his mercy will give them grace so they could pull up their pants because mm. if it wasn't for the mercy of God mine might be down mm. huh Right. God made it clear to me. He said, you can be anything that anybody else is yes. if it wasn't for my grace. All right. All right. The difference between the sinner and I is the grace of God. Amen. Amen. And God left us here on this earth mm -hmm. to pray. Yes. Yes. To see how messed up folk is mm -hmm. or folk are. And look beyond their faults, see they need. Because uh -huh. didn't they know what God did for you? Yeah. 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 We had to look beyond a whole lot of stuff. Yes, and I think But he saw what? The need. Yes. And not only see the need, but God said, seek to meet the need. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what we read about mercy? Mm -hmm. A desire to help. Mm -hmm. That's where he's bringing me. And I thank him for it. Amen. 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 Because that's what we are here for. Amen. So look what he said. Um, the spirit that's working in children just to be. Among whom also we all what? Had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But here it is. But God, who is what? Rich, Rich in mercy. mercy. In other words, he got a whole lot of yeah. That's why it's new every morning. <laughs> Amen. It's Amen. new. He got a whole lot of it. Amen. Amen. He, he, he doesn't run out. He, de he doesn't run out of mercy now. You can sing your way out of that place. <laughs> because this is, I always make this distinction. There's a difference between the mercy of God and his own suffering. Mm -hmm. His mercy endures forever on them that fear him. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. It doesn't just say his mercy endures forever. It endures forever on them that fear him. Because if you fear God, when you struggle, you're going to be seeking God for what? Mercy. mercy. Uh -huh. But his long suffering oh. is on those that don't fear him. Mm -hmm. He's just putting up with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's giving you a chance to, to get it right, right. but Long suffering, and by virtue of it being long suffering, <laughs> means it has an end. Amen. Amen. Okay. And so we got to get that revelation. Amen. But God, who is rich in mercy, mm -hmm. now watch this. Remember what we talked about? He's doing it for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 4. Ephesians 2, 4. For God is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Mm -hmm. Even when we didn't love him. Mm -hmm. He loved us. That's why he came after you. Mm -hmm. He found Abraham worshiping idols. Mm -hmm. And he told Abraham, come out. Because mm -hmm. I want to show some mercy on you. Mm -hmm. And Abraham did what? Obey. No, obey yeah. And in every step, Abraham obeyed. Mm -hmm. So he yeah. stayed under the umbrella of God's word. Mercy. Mercy. Mm -hmm. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ by grace you say, and have raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards through, uh, toward us through Christ Jesus. Hebrews 4. I'm about done for the day, but I'm going I'm I'm to do one more Sunday of this because I want us to see something else about this mercy. And I'm not done for today. I just want to share a few more scriptures. And, 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 I, and I 
share the scriptures with you because the word of God is the source of our faith. Mm -hmm. This is what we base our hope on. I hope he will fulfill his word. Okay. Now look, look what he said. Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, a great intercessor, like Moses. Moses was an intercessor. And Jesus sits on that throne. He's there right now. You know what he's doing? Make an intercession for us. Just like Moses did. Amen. And sometimes when, when the Father said, that's it, Christ says what? Oh, give him give another chance. <laughs> Do y'all believe that? Yeah. This is what the Bible teaches us about Jesus. He hmm. says he is the He's sitting on the throne making intercession for us to the Father. Mm -hmm. Just like Moses did. Mm -hmm. That's why we thank God for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you know why he can intercede? Because he done been through what we go through. Mm -hmm. He's been tempted on all points like we are. He's felt, as the song said, I felt the, um, the breakers dashing and the billows roll, oh, wow. trying to conquer my soul. I, I felt it. Jesus felt it. Mm -hmm. Don't think, don't think when Jesus was in this flesh mm -hmm. that he didn't have to fight. Amen. Don't even think that because that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that he suffered being tempted yeah. because his flesh could be tempted. Yeah. It was his spirit that kept him from falling. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why he's trying to help us. That's why you got to build up your spirit and stop allowing the devil to tear it down. Mm -hmm. Some of the mm -hmm. stuff we listening to, we watching, and as I always say, you watch who you hanging with. Because yes. mm -hmm. the devil will use folk to tear your spirit down. Amen. Mm -hmm. The word of God builds it up. Yes. So, look what he says. Seeing we have this great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest, watch this, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities or our weaknesses. Mm. No matter what weakness you go through, he was tempted, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, but he passed the test. And he wants you to pass the test. Remember what we talked about mercy? Mm -hmm. He sees, you know, your infirmity and all that. But he wants you to pass the test. Mm -hmm. So this is what he tells us to do. We're going to pass the test. See? Okay. Let me read 15 again. But we have not in high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Okay. Verse 16. Let us therefore come how? Boldly. boldly. Because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. We can come boldly. We don't have to come to him. But we can come boldly mm -hmm. to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy, mercy mm -hmm. and find grace, grace to help mm -hmm. in time of need. Mm -hmm. And when do we need it? When is the time of need? All, All the time. time. All the time. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, yes. 365 days a year, and 66 in leap year. Mm -hmm. We need mercy. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need grace to help us to overcome because the enemy is relentless. Mm -hmm. He gonna keep coming. He know he's lost, but if you don't know mm -hmm. So that's how we keep coming. This is what he said. This is what this, the person in, in Lamentation was saying, I, all of that that was I was going through, but he said, this is where my hope lies. This is of God's mercy. So that's why he stayed at that throne of grace. You know why Daniel was perfect? Because he stayed at the throne of grace. The Bible said he prayed three times a day. Mm -hmm. He stayed in the earth. Ain't no easy way. Yes. Ain't no easy way. No shortcuts. No shortcuts at all. <clears throat> Not at all. 
I'm going to read this last scripture and I'll be done for today. He said, go home and rehearse it. See, because I'm telling y'all what's going to happen. And, and y'all know I always talk about this. As soon as you, matter of fact, probably before you step out the door, <laughs> the devil going to try to take this word out your heart. Amen. He's going to start having you think yeah. about your problems, your issues, yeah. and what you, this, that, and the other thing. You better hold on to the word. Amen. Amen. That's how he operates. That's right. Because he knows if he can get the word, uh, if the word is your foundation, yeah. mm -hmm. if the foundations are destroyed, what? Can the righteous be? That's how he operates. Yeah. Now, scripture, Hebrews 6 17. We might deal with it again next week, but this is the last one I'm going to read today. Hebrews 6, and we're going to start at verse 17. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, and it's the promise of the Holy Ghost, that's what the promise is, the immutability of his counsel. And immutability means the unchangeableness. He, he, if God said it, it's going to come to pass. Amen. You know, the only thing that can stop the promise of God from coming to pass in your life, you. And right. You don't meet the condition. Mm -hmm. Because th the promises are all based on condition. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, the condition is you have to be willing and what? Obedient. 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 So look what he says. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel. He confirmed it by an oath. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that God swore to David. We'll see that next week. Mm -hmm. He didn't just promise him. He swore to him. Now, what did the Bible tell us about swing? Don't do it. And the reason why it tells you not to do it, because you can't turn one of your hairs of your head white or black. Mm -hmm. But once you swear to something, when you say, I swear I'm going to do it, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. Ain't no need to say, well, I, I meant to. No, once you swear, mm -hmm. once you give that oath, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. So God said, don't swear. Mm -hmm. Don't swear at all. Don't swear by heaven. Don't swear by earth. Mm -hmm. And all these other things y'all be swearing by. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't make your word good. God can. All right. There are some things that you might need to do, but stuff can happen. Mm -hmm. But I don't care. Once you swore, y'all better get in the book and see what it said. Once you swear to it, mm -hmm. You are bound to it. That's why he said, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Because whatever comes before this is of sin. That's right. Amen. They say, I, I, I'll help you out if the Lord bless. Because if you die, you can't help him. So ain't no need swearing to it. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. This is what the Bible teaches us. But God can't swear. And he swore, the Bible says, to make sure that we know that his word can be trusted. Yeah. This is what he said. He confirmed it with an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope, the hope of eternal life set before us. To remember. God came not. If he said it in his word, only thing you got to do is meet the condition. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. Now watch what he says in verse 19. Which hope we have mm -hmm. as an anchor mm -hmm. of the social. So when the billows are rolling, mm -hmm. and life is real rough sometimes, don't you know it's your hope in the word of God that keeps you in? Because mm. the storm has got to subside. Amen. But where are you going to be when the storm is over? <laughs> but if you're in the word, you're going to be in. Amen. And that's why I used to sing that so my soul is. Anchor. And I know my soul is in because if, if, if my soul wasn't anchored, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I've been through some storms. But the word hath kept me angry. Okay. 
which hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entered into that within the veil. See, because our hope is not in anything in this world. Mm -hmm. It's in what is in heaven. Yeah. Okay, because watch what he says. Whether the forerunners for us enter, even Jesus, made in high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So saints, keep hope alive. Amen. Keep hoping in God's mercy because it's of his mercies we are not consumed. Keep praying, keep seeking God until he delivers you. Don't be satisfied because this is what's happening to a lot of people. And, and, and I blame some of us preachers that are not preaching the truth. We get discouraged because we keep fed. So we just resign ourselves to say, um, we all going to sing. <clears throat> and and, that, and, that, and instead, we just human. Mm -hmm. Not that that before. Yeah. Because we lose hope in God's power. But I'm trying to help us to understand it's not your power that keeps you safe. No. Oh, it's, right. his right. it's his power. It's his mercy that gives you that power. Yeah. Yeah. If he ain't doing it in you, it ain't getting done. Yeah. Hmm. But he wants to help you. Yeah. Did, did I make that plain today? Yeah. <laughs> he wants to help. Yeah. So don't lose hope. He right. like an unjust judge. He wants to avenge you of your adversaries. He wants to deliver you from your addiction. But you got to hope in it. Don't lose hope, but keep hope up. Alive. Keep it alive. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep seeking. Let's give God a hand for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to have our uh, communion today. Thank God for Mother Wilson. She um, helped us not to forget it. So, well, you can just put it on the floor. Just roll the table out. Amen.
people search our hearts, search our minds, and, and preserve us, O oh God, in your word. If we find anything in us that's not like you, pray that you will purge it out. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, No, no, start at verse, um, yeah, verse 23. For I, for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken of you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do you do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and, let, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, sickly among you, and many sleep. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to pass it around. Amen. I have received the Lord, that which also I have delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take me, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death to the time. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Amen. 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 Amen.